Hi guys, and welcome to Trucking Along with Kiersey. That's me, your positive voice in trucking. <laughs> Today I want to talk about staying feminine out on the road. And, um, you know, I've gotten messages from women about this being a dirty, greasy, grimy job at times. You know, sometimes we're in 120 degree weather and you go in and take a shower and you come back out and you need another shower so you feel gross and all sweaty. You climb under a trailer to go, um, you know, inspect it and you come out with grease all over your clothes or like last night I'm in a meat plant and it was all full of mud and you have to get underneath the tires to the tandems and pull the tandem pin and... You know, there were a couple comments about my makeup and my hair, and I'm going to give you some tips that, honestly, I don't do my hair and my makeup when I'm not on the camera, and I do it when I go into the terminals and I'm ready to, you know, go to dinner or something special, but I I don't take the time to do this every day, <laughs> but we're going to talk about, you know, staying feminine, staying womanly on the road when we come back, <laughs> so stick with me. Okay, one thing I suggest is that you have clothes that you don't care about. Like on a daily basis, have t-shirts and things like that, boots and stuff that you don't care about, that you can jump out of the truck and go get it all greasy and, and get it all muddy and you just don't care. Because that's going to happen. But I also think that you should have a few outfits on the truck that are more feminine and, you know, dressy, if you will, that when you are in a place that you might be able to take a 34 and go get a hotel room and there might be a restaurant downstairs or a restaurant next door and you just want to feel normal. Or I go into the terminals a lot and... I'll go and do my hair and makeup there and then go out to dinner with friends or, you know, a lot of the people at Prime, they have their cars uh, there. So a group of us might go out and go out to dinner and just having nice clothes and a nice pair of shoes on the truck, even if it's one outfit, it breaks up that feeling of, oh my God, I feel so masculine. I feel so manly. You know, I said in my hygiene video that I make it a point to go to European wax centers and get my eyebrows waxed and underarms and everything so that I don't have to deal with that on a normal basis. Um, I don't do my hair and my makeup every day and people have commented on my hair, which I think is hysterical. So I got a secret for that later. But when it comes to makeup, the rattling in the truck, especially in the Cascadias would break up the the makeup and the powders. So one thing that I've done, I don't know if you can tell, this is one of those igloo bags. So the inside is that waterproof stuff. That way all my makeup is in here and if it winds up breaking apart, it really doesn't matter because I could just clean the bag out. And uh, I said in one of the other videos, if you get little Ziploc baggies, and put your makeup in there and then even put cotton balls in there to, to like um, prevent, it secures it from the vibrations. It may help you to not have the powders break apart all over the place. I do appreciate the compliments on my hair and makeup though. <laughs> uh, just getting the hair like, you know, getting to the point where you color it and, and do the roots, because yes, my roots get gray. Unfortunately, I admit it. Um, so I've gotten to the point where I don't even really bother with that too much. Once every few months, I'll go and get the coloring done. So here's a shocker for you people. Some of you people might have guessed, some of you might not have noticed, or maybe you just don't care. I'm gonna guess the guys don't care. I wear Raquel Welsh wigs on camera and I bought this one over a year ago and um, I did it just because I felt masculine on the road and I didn't have the time or want to take the energy to do my hair. So I bought it off of namebrandwigs.com. They are a great company, right? And 
I'll show you. And it is just so much easier to make you feel feminine again. Seriously. And even my natural hair is in a lot better shape because I'm not coloring it all the time. And I know people might say, well, that's a lot of money to spend. Because, like, these are about... The list price will say $400, and then they put them on sale, and then there's always a 30% off coupon. So you're paying 200 bucks for a wig that, you know, I've had this for a year, and yes, the ends are starting to get a little ratty, but you throw it in a little bucket container, and I have special shampoo and special detangler spray, and then I hang it up on... <laughs> Seriously, I have these little hooks that I hang them up and then they dry out. And the truth of the matter is nobody realizes, because even the blonde, if you keep coloring your natural hair blonde, what happens? It starts to look frayy, like straw and, and frizzy. So, okay, so the wig looks frizzy. That means it looks more natural. So this one I'm wearing right now is Raquel Welsh Limelight in Shaded Biscuit. It's something that they call a shaded rooted color. So if you look, it's got the darker roots. This one that I have, I can part it in the middle. I could part it on the other side. And when you look at it, it looks like a scalp. It has a lace front, so people tell me they can't ever tell. And Raquel Welsh, when she colors the hair, you'll see that there's extra blonde, like, up front. So this one is Raquel Welsh, Flirt Alert, in Fiery Copper. It's reddish. Let me see. The lights don't matter. But it's a reddish color that has this really cool gold highlights going through. And I really didn't think that I would like red. But when I saw this color on a YouTube reviewer, I was like, oh, that's really cute. Let me try it. <laughs> so I wound up getting this was my second one. Um, and, you know... I have these little hooks, the little over the over the um, door type of hooks for a coat rack. I have them over my cabinet, <laughs> so I hang up the the wigs on the cabinet that way. And so this is fiery copper flirt alert. I think I'm gonna get this in the blonde because I think it's kind of cute. What do you think? <laughs> okay, this one is called curve appeal. By, also by Raquel Welsh. Right. If you notice, different from the one I seem to wear more often, it's got shorter pieces. It's got like a layer thing going on. You've seen me wear this, and sometimes I'll put it back with barrettes. Sometimes I put it with the headband. Um, it's got these little tabs here, so you can adjust it to your head. And the cool thing about her... Uh, her caps is that they got this stretchy wefting so it's really light it's not um, you know it's not uh, hot and this lace front people can't tell like where your hairline begins so pushing it back and everything like nobody can notice and because again this is the shaded color, the shaded rooting. You can't tell, you know, even if my pieces of my natural hair come out, you can't tell the difference. It's awesome. And with this, what they call monofilament, I think is what they call it. Um, when you do the part, it looks like skin and you can part it anywhere on this other wig that I just had on, this is the fiery copper. If you look on this, this has what they call a partial filament. So you can only put the part on that one side. Um, so, but you just kind of shake them out and then you put them on and see what happens. So this is curve appeal. Uh, I've had people tell me that this looks so sexy and you know, I've worn this in the terminal, and I've worn this one to, um, I even wore this to the international dealer, and other women, other truckers, said to me, oh my god, your hair is so gorgeous, where do you find the time? I wish mine would look like that, and I was like, oh, 
It can! I promise, it can! <laughs> Just find a color that you like. So this one is called Always. This is also Raquel Welsh. This one is in Shaded Cappuccino. So it's a lot, it's a lot darker throughout um, than the other blonder ones. Uh, but the cool thing about these fibers and all these different ones is that they are synthetic wigs, but they feel like real hair. And um, these are heat resistant. So if you want to take like a straight iron to them and straighten them out, you can do that. If you want to take a curling iron, it's a fast, easy way to feel girly again. And you're not going to see these people at the truck stops or the customers ever again. So, you know, do you really care? First off, they're never going to know you're wearing a wig because they don't know you. So they don't know what you look like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I don't know if my fleet manager realizes that they're wigs um, I'm not even sure that he pays that close attention to what I look like but the guy that was sitting next to him the other day when I was well two weeks ago when I was in the terminal he said to me oh your hair looks really good today and I was like oh thanks <laughs> Um, I didn't tell him, of course, but when I was working at the post office, I would have long blonde hair and then I'd cut it this short and make it auburn or something like that. And so people were used to me changing my hair all the time. And I used to get Tony Brett and had these cheap little like $30 clip on. So you put your ponytail on and then you clipped it on. But a lot of times it didn't match the hair, your hair color. So I had all different colors all the time. And you know, they were cute and they were nice, but, um, people knew that they were fake. And what I found out is that with these Raquel Welsh wigs, people really don't know. They really don't know that I'm wearing wigs. And I've even had, I've told like my cousin and uh, the first time I wore one home to my mother, she was looking at me and I was waiting. I didn't say anything because I wanted to see what she was going to say, but she hadn't seen me in like two months. So, um, you know, she said to me, she's like, wow, your hair really looks good. And I was like, well, thanks. And I was waiting and waiting and she didn't say anything further. Like, oh, I can't believe you bought a wig. So then I told her and I took it off and she was like, <laughs> and, um, I went to dinner with a cousin recently, the last time I was home. And her and her daughter were like, your hair is so cute. I wish I could, you know, get mine to look like that. I was like, you can look, it's fake. <laughs> I pulled the wig off and the whole rest of dinner, I'm trying to sit here and secure the wig back without, um, you know, without a mirror. But um, to secure them on, I just have these little headband things that I also bought from namebrandwigs.com. And you just wrap them around your head and then you push down and it just, they just stay on. And the way these caps are designed, they actually, they're like a memory fit. So they fit snugly to your head and they sort of form to the shape of your head. We have to stay girly out here or you start to feel like a man. And this is part of the reality of trucking unfortunately um a lot of times you don't feel like doing it sometimes you don't feel like taking a shower you have to sit here and decide am i more hungry or am i more dirty where i need a shower or you know do i have to do laundry what is it eat sleep go to the bathroom and i'm going to tell you <laughs> sometimes in those situations sleeping wins out so um you know if you're a woman then do whatever makes you feel good out here. If that means putting your makeup on every day, then take five minutes to figure out how to put your makeup on. Like seriously, my biggest problem is that I do the makeup with this mirror up above my visor. <laughs> and I don't know if you've noticed, but every once in a while I'll have like eyeshadow way up here that I couldn't tell. And then I watch it in the video. I'm like, Oh my God. And how do I edit that out? I don't know. And, um, you know, one time my mother said to me, oh, you looked good, except, you know, it looked like you poked yourself in the eye because you had this big black mark over 
over here. And some of the, you know, some of the truck stops, like the truck stops usually have good bathroom lighting, but I've noticed that the showers in our terminal, we have one set of showers that has horrible lighting. So I put my makeup on to do a video for you guys. And when I came out, I was like, oh my God, I look like a Vegas showgirl. And then I was like, wow, in this other video, I look like a hooker. Oh my God. <laughs> And I'm trying to like rub the makeup off my face and like blend it in uh, so I didn't look that bad. Do whatever makes you feel good. And I know there's going to be people that watch this video and say, oh my God, I can't believe she did that. Why would she tell anybody that, you know, she's using the wigs and, or, you know, whatever. But for 200 bucks, that one lasted me a year. And I don't wear them often enough that I would need to replace them right away. Now, yeah, if you're wearing a wig all the time and they do tangle the long ones, like this one's not going to tangle as much because it's like shorter and up above the back of my neck. So if you get shorter ones, they'll probably be easier to care for than these longer ones. Uh, what the hell did I just do? Oh. Um, Jean Renault on name brand wigs. Jean Renault has the comb and a detangler spray and a shampoo all together in a package. So, um, you know, sometimes, yeah, they're going to get raggedy looking and you just take the comb and kind of just comb it down and to wash them. It's really no big deal. You just put them in the plastic container, fill it with water splash around like a quarter because these are kind of long so about a quarter size of the shampoo and you mix it in and then you just push the wigs down into the water and I've done this at rest areas <laughs> and then I go to the bathroom and I brush my teeth and all that and leave them for like five or ten minutes and then you pull them back out and don't wring them just squeeze them like this to get the water out run it through the faucet uh, to get all the soap out and then just squeeze them and don't twist them, but you just squeeze them and make sure you squeeze all out of the cap. And then I go and hang them on my hook and that's how I do it. So if this inspires you to not feel so manly and maybe try something that's outside of your box or outside of your comfort level, but it makes you feel good, then go for it. Woohoo! Girl power, right? <laughs> Um, but these are just some of the things, the realities, like my mother was just laughing at me because I was on the phone with her brushing my teeth with, you know, a cup and, you know, a cup of water and, um, there's no bathrooms here. There's no, it's a meat plant. Um, but you do what you got to do and the makeup, you know, buy cheap stuff. Don't go spending like all that money on, I used to buy Elizabeth Arden and everything and they just crumble and the creams melt from the heat and don't even bother. Just buy cheap stuff from CVS or something and, you know, watch some of the YouTube videos and see what it is that you like and what colors you like. You know, I, I really like there's, um, some of the really cheaper lipsticks because they have a uh, color stay that you put it on and then you put the clear uh, sealant type of protector. I think this one's called 24 hour lips from it's either Maybelline or CoverGirl. It's one of them, but you know, you just do what you got to do. That's all. <laughs> and uh, you know, don't be embarrassed. And don't let anybody make you feel bad if you don't have time to do your makeup. I have a friend, and if he's watching this, I'm still mad at him about it. Um, <laughs> because, you know, he told me like a year ago that I should do my hair and my makeup more often and be girly. And that really kind of made me mad and upset me because I don't think he's ever seen me without my makeup. You know, you don't want to feel dirty and you don't want to feel unmade up sometimes. Sometimes you need, you know, and even if you have to tell your fleet manager, hey, guess what? I need to do laundry and I need to go take care of some things. Then take care of it and go take your shower and do your makeup and put your fake hair on or 
you know, do your real hair. I never tried a curl and iron on the truck, but I know the hair dryers will blow out the circuit. They will blow out the the inverter. So don't use a hair dryer on the truck. And my my normal hair is actually pretty long, so it takes a long time to dry. But anyway, do whatever makes you feel good. And don't tell, let anybody tell you that you're ugly or you need to do your makeup or you need to do your hair or anything like that. You do what makes you feel good. If it doesn't bother you, which most of the time it doesn't bother me, I don't care what people that I don't know think I look like. You know, but there are plenty of times that I do feel like a girly girl. Like I was one of those that everything had to color coordinate in my apartment. And I had, you know, paintings, like hand-on paintings of calla lilies. And then, of course, I had calla lilies in real vases that matched the colors of the paintings and things like that. So that's just one of the ways I get to stay girly. Always have a good pair of shoes and dressier clothes. Uh, in addition to your regular clothes you don't care about. And I hope this inspires you to not be so afraid of it coming out to a man job if you're a woman. So comment down below if you do wear wigs and where do you get them from. If um, you think it's harder to wear them out on the road and care for them, do you have any tips? And... Um, you know, maybe I should ask you, what's your favorite one I wore today? <laughs> I'll keep my, my audience interested that way. Uh, but like, comment, subscribe, ring the little notification bell, and I hope to see you out here truck, truck, trucking along. Bye. <laughs>